what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel so i just got back home from a very long short drive i left a couple hours ago to meet up with the homie alejandro alejandro is the previous owner of the h23 in the giveaway car he had an ej1 coupe that he sold the kid wrecked it the same night car ended up in the junkyard he gave me the tip it was there i went there and i picked up that engine for a future build and that future build is this car so i met up with him a little while ago because i put out a feeler post of looking for a 9091 crx front bumper and he had just that so we picked up two bumpers for the price of one he had this one originally um for sale along with this and a third bumper but the third bumper is not oem this one is that one is as well this was a parts car he got that from the junkyard so when i got there this one didn't have a bumper support but this one did i didn't want this one because it was all gashed up pretty bad right there and uh he was like you know what i don't even have the crx anymore so if you want just take this one too take that bumper support put it on here trash that or keep it or whatever you're gonna do so he hooked it up i got both of these bumpers for one great price and that bumper is gonna go on to this car when i start tearing the front end off of it yes the jdm front is coming off i am keeping that for the silver crx so on this car i didn't talk about it yet but I installed the carbon fiber hood that came off the Flip RX on here. I mean, I haven't spoke about a lot of things, but um, you, you guys are probably going to see the update on this here real soon. But I took the hood off of this car to put the carbon one on. So that means I'm going to have a freshly painted hood that's going to go on this car with that bumper to get this whole front end back to USDM. What I want to do is I want to fit it all up first and make sure everything's all good before I pull it off to start do the bodywork and uh, paint match it to the car. Also, he gave me some brand new uh depot corner lamps these are clear 9091 corner lamps which is the same one pretty much i run on that car i have the same set that's going to be going on this car and he also gave me some bumper lamps brand new as well that's also clear because obviously i'm going to need them as well so big shout out to alejandro thank you for uh, hooking all this up bro and like we already spoke i'm going to head back to grab some more things from him and uh we'll keep you guys posted on that as well too Today, what I want to do, today, tonight, what I want to do is try to turn this car on. In the last update to this car, we, we slapped the engine in the engine bay with the transmission and hooked up whatever I could and that was about it. This is like literally 95% done. 95% because the shifter box is not in there and the ECU is not in it as well. Don't roast me in the comment section for the funnel. I've attempted the no funnel technique a couple of times and every time it has never worked in my favor. So I'll probably put like half a quart, double check underneath. I also forgot to mention, I did pull the oil pan off right here and I uh, bunged it for a dash 10. Uh, put the new oil pan gasket on. I also did a brand new valve cover gasket So that's sealed and ready to rock and roll. I ordered a bracket should be here to day or two For the throttle cable. I also ordered a throttle body without the fast idle like port on the bottom um, The throttle body that I was looking for I made sure that it had the barbs like this instead of that big old plate down here for the fast idle because we're not running it. Um, we do have a map sensor plugged in right here. This is an OEM map sensor. It's an OBD1 map sensor. And uh, it is vacuumed up right here in the back. This is for the wideband, which we don't need right now. Um, I do want to wire up the... The reverse switch, I do need to go through my boxes and find the same plug uh, female side so we can wire it up to the harness, which actually been cut for years. It's never been there. I mean, I lost it a long time ago, but I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, we have my stock all-wheel drive header. All-wheel drive is because I made the bottom down pipe to clear the transfer case when I first did the all-wheel drive in 2018. So we have Leo's old muffler as well which is the dual tip, uh, I believe this is a DA, I could be wrong, but um, I'm just using this for now just to keep this car nice and quiet when I turn it on so it's not all loud and throaty. So I think what's next is a uh, laptop and ECU. Hondaera. 
Yo, big shout out to Nomis Industry. I just went back to his place the other day to pick up uh, pretty much the ECU setup and ignition setup for the giveaway car. So this right here, guys, this is a ECU Tamer by Honda Rules, I believe. ECU Tamer. And I, I think I've shown this before when we turned the car on for the first time. But what he did was he came back here to pick it up because he hooked your boy up, the giveaway car, with the Honda Rules Cop Mini Kit. If you guys are out here in the Northern California, if you guys need Honda or Cop Mini Conversion, Nomans Industry, always in the description below. I also spent a lot of time cleaning up the wiring down here. I mean, it wasn't messy, it just wasn't together. So there are a lot of zip tying and cleaning up of excess wires and stuff to kind of clean up the footwell here. I think the only wiring left I have to do is this white wire, which is the data logging wire for the AFR wideband for the AEM X series sensor. And uh, that'll pretty much button up all the wiring down here. So right now, oh, this is for, this is for the Boost Max solenoid. So that's gonna be plugged in once the solenoid, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna run the solenoid depending on um on the dyno like how many psi is going to be in the spring and i'm not trying to go crazy so i don't need the boost controller to turn up or anything all right guys i don't know what i'm doing but okay i'm an idiot this is k manager we need s manager down here it just said something about updating s300 check for updates all right, so it's updated. Go ahead and download. Okay, well, simply, I'm gonna go to my injectors real quick. And 1650, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this map. I have it on this laptop already, but I, just, I like to save it and date it to make sure that I have the latest of it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to new calibration and I am looking for a bone stock. So I'm looking for a GSR because this is a complete GSR motor. So right here we got stock P72 GSR 9495 OBD1. I'm going to select that map and I'm just going to go ahead and disable a few things like O2 sensor. Just the stuff that we're not using. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that. I'm going to go ahead and just upload it to the ECU now. What I also have to do is I forgot completely is we are running OBD0 injectors this time around and my last set of injectors I didn't need the resistor box so it was blocked off you can see it right here so all I got to do is take off the plug and my resistor box is already sitting down here so all I got to do is plug that in fuel pump Oh man, the battery sat for a long time. You want to know how stupid I am? Very. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if I thought I did something wrong, whatever, right? Realizing that uh, my cop kit is not freaking installed. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Gently press it in lock it in and uh i don't know why i don't know why i completely forgot that but i completely forgot that and uh i gotta make sure that my two wires are not touching each other which is right here that's plugged up i will i will loop it up later and another thing i just remembered is the car is freaking on e85 so um <laughs> I guess I'm gonna try to turn it on with E85. So I have the Audi charging up the battery and uh, I was kind of testing out the coil pack right here in the front because it sounded like it wasn't getting any spark because I started smelling a lot of like unburnt fuel. I took out this coil pack right here. I swapped it over here, swapped these two guys together. So they're all in different spot. And then I took out cylinder one, threw a spark plug in it, grounded it to the distributor while pressuring it. So the spring is touching the top of the spark plug. And then I started it right here with the uh, needle nose and it wasn't getting any spark. So I called my buddy Nomus Industry 
and kind of ran the situation by him and he gave me some very simple diagnostic that slipped right through my mind and he was like all right well check for um ground we have continuity he said check for power and we didn't have any power so then he goes check the black and yellow right here for power to the cause and see if i'm getting power through the harness i said okay i'll check it nothing he goes something is going on with this that's going inside the car so i came inside the car here to figure out okay what's going on and as soon as i tucked my head up under here i found that this plug <laughs> was halfway in um yeah i don't well maybe i did take this plug out. i don't remember but i could have sworn i plugged it back in but we got it plugged in we got power and uh, <laughs> i'm ready to turn this thing on boy let's get it power on he said i shouldn't have any issues with the e85 so i am just gonna go ahead and uh fire this thing over with e85 i did it in the flip rx it didn't have any issues and um hopefully we don't have any issues here we've cranked this a million times already we got the battery charging back there and i'm gonna go ahead and just data log this again real quick i did do the tps sensor as well the most i got is 92 i'm gonna do it again with the multimeter to get it correct but 92 i mean it's pretty close so um we are we are live on the laptop here and and it is on baby wow that 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 gas smells really bad it sounds freaking awesome no ticking noise no leaks super quiet we don't have coolant in it so i'm not going to run it for too long but yo the engine sounds freaking amazing and you know the best part about this too the exhaust is really quiet the fuel pump is louder than this thing god damn it success Sit. okay check engine light oh no maybe it's just a switch no check engine light baby let's go there you have it engine is on so we're not going to end the video right here there's still one more thing i want to do inside the car which is the the shifter box and i kind of want to show you guys how i'm going to go about making the shifter box i had a lot of people been asking me about how i mounted my shifter box in i think this time around i'm gonna do it a little bit differently with a custom plate that i want to make i've been watching hush performance make their stuff because he has a crazy fancy cnc machine and press and all that stuff but um, as a typical garage guy, we're going to make something happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, actually I'm going to run the coolant through it right now. And then we're probably going to pick up tomorrow because I don't want to cut and grind late into the night. So continuing the next day here, this is what I kind of came up with as far as my shifter plate goes. And uh, let me show you guys what I did last time so if you guys don't know the shifter tunnel has this like inch of a lip where the uh, shift rubber boot uh, kind of sits on to protect element from coming inside of the car now I don't want to lose this um, this feature I mean not that it would matter because I have to shift the box the shift the box itself was actually just sitting on top of um, this lip and I had spacers to make up for the gap that I have down here. And it literally just bolted down to the tunnel. You can see one, two, um, three and four. And then I got the um, billet shifter, which then I have um, this two uh, rivet nuts to hold that plate down. But I ended up just using the billet shifter for the giveaway card because it looks much more cooler over there. And I uh, just kind of threw the stock one back in here. But because I did all the taking out and putting on and drilling and all that, this, this hole right here, the riv nut fell out of it and the hole is a lot bigger. So I can't um, put another one there without it coming out. And I want to secure the shifter box with all four points. So I decided I am going to make a plate, which is this right here out of uh, aluminum because i don't know where to get thick metal uh sheets right now because my metal shop is kind of closed 
for a very long time and I'm just gonna make it out of aluminum, really thick aluminum, because I have it. I wanna make a plate that's gonna sit above that lip. And then obviously the four points for the shifter box. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the two 10 mil holes here, right? And the 212 right here where the original shift linkage bushing sat. So the bushing, these are these are for 12 mil and these are 10 in the front so with this sitting in place aligning where i need this to align the shift the box to be centered in my console which is kind of about right there give or take and uh, i'm going to drill two holes right here and i'm going to weld spacers on this plate to make up for the distance of um the plate to the the holes and then i'm going to weld those spacers here shut so that way this whole thing comes off in one piece i'm going to do two for the back and i'm going to do two in the front which is going to be somewhere here and um yeah all that's going to be made out of aluminum so this plate right here is a lot thicker than the plate that i used to make the intercooler that's on the uh, giveaway crx and i don't think it'll give me any like crazy flex issues especially if i have four points on it and then i have that big lip um from the tunnel kind of supporting the center so i already got it all traced out right here guys i'm just going to go ahead and cut this thing out um i don't know if i have any grinding disc but if i don't have i'm an idiot <laughs> i'm a vertical bandsaw let's cut So I came back here to look for my round tube, right? And I just realized that this is steel and not aluminum like I thought. And the reason why, like I said, I made the base plate out of aluminum is because that's all I have and I don't have steel. Obviously you can't weld steel to aluminum. So I'm kind of ass out of luck right now. But what I can do to continue making progress is I can cut out the length that I need and just stick it underneath here before bolting it down and then bolt the shifter box on top of it so it'll still be a spacer underneath. Um, it should tighten up and not move once you know the plate is bolted down to the tunnel but this is pretty much my plate right here guys and it is uh, riv nutted and it is bolted down. I decided to put two right here in the center instead of the OEM holes because these OEM holes are actually at an angle if you can see it so it'll kind of place the bolt at a weird angle so i decided to put two bolt right down the middle nice and flat back right here is flat as well went inside took some measurements drilled these two holes out and i still got to do the two for the front but um i think what i'm going to do right now is um i'm still going to cut out the spacer that i need and i just measured it with the uh digital caliper it is 17 mil from the top of the plate to the bottom of the shift the tunnel the exhaust tunnel so i'm going to cut two 17 mil off right now just two bolts it's already solid so i'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process for the two in the front and get this shifter box mounted so that way we can go for a drive hell yeah this thing is sturdy as hell so I'm not going to put the center console back on because I want to clean the interior and stuff and uh, I don't want to have to keep taking it off and on. So I'm going to let it be, um, leave it open right here like this. And I think, uh, I think I want to drop this car and, uh, go for a drive. Now I know the car kind of sputters a little bit because it's on E85 and, um, the car 
probably will drive it's just gonna not drive right so um i'm just gonna go ahead and put the wheels on drop the car and see what it does i mean if it drives, we'll take it around a block if it doesn't then um well we'll park it back on the driveway straight up this thing sounds like a pure riser <laughs> no resonator and it is raspy as hell I don't know that burnout felt kind of weird i mean it was peeling but you guys gotta understand that there's a ton of acorns so i was gliding all over this right here <laughs> look at that all the smush acorn <laughs> not a lick of smoke anywhere <laughs> one white one tire fire so the car was warming up when i was about to leave and it was about 165 right now with the fan on it dropped down to 145 like real quick so that's good but i hate seeing i hate seeing the gauge being down at the bottom like that it makes me feel like it ain't working but it says it right there 145 it's kind of crazy but it just say on the laptop ah, laptop is dead but uh that's good to know so we just parked the car back up here. Uh, we hear we heard a weird like clunky noise, and uh, I think it was just because I didn't have the hood closed. But that clunky noise kind of just came out of nowhere. I think it was. I really think it was just the hood bouncing around. But um, yeah. Anyways, guys, GSR, it's running in the car. I mean, I drove it around the block. I did the dumbass burnout with no throttle cable bracket, just a zip tie holding it. So it was kind of sluggish, but. All that stuff is on the way, I thought about it, and all that is also on the way, and um, the car runs, the car drives, the car sounds good, the, car, the car's temperatures looks good, the clutch engages, the clutch, I mean, obviously it held right there. Um, everything with the setup has turned out great, so now that we have the engine running, driving, we're ready to step into the next phase, but... I, I'm still super indecisive about which turbo I'm gonna use with the setup. I pretty much have like nearly everything with a few stuff coming in like the blow off valve and the feed line, return line stuff. And uh, once we get all that, we're gonna get into the turbo stuff. Um, but if that, if that takes a little while, I do have some things I wanna do in between like swapping the J front off of this car and fitting the USD in front and on here, finding my headlights somewhere, uh, get the corner lamps all buttoned up and really start working towards getting this car um, in, in the format that it's gonna go in. So all the stuff that I wanna take out, I'm gonna start taking it out and stuff like that. But I'm not sure if I wanna show all that because it's all, it's all you know, you, you guys know how to take out suspension and put them back in. It's very simple, straightforward stuff. So um, there are some other things that I could be doing in between, which I am probably going to do in between, like get back on that car or we're going to be wrenching on Leo's car. And uh, yeah, there's this, this just a lot to come here, guys. Um, my main goal was to get the, the all-wheel drive car off the grass, moved up here, get the GSR in here. Now that the car runs and drive again, I can't just leave it all motor for now and just kind of tackle everything else that I want to do but uh we'll figure it out as the day goes but as far as this video goes we're gonna end it right here the gsr is running it sounds good and uh progress is better than no progress guys so if you guys enjoyed today's video a little bit be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you guys want to stick around for the turbo action with this car turbo fabrication or turbo installation whatever you guys if you guys want to see some turbo stuff with this car be sure to hit the subscribe button you need to work on your turbo noises because yeah I, yeah my bad guys i've never had a turbo car so i don't know how it sounds uh, it like. sounded like one of them chinese whistle blowers you put an exhaust on ebay you know that's what it sounds like 25 dollars whistleblower but anyways if you guys want to see some turbo stuff be sure to hit the subscribe button but with that being said thank you guys for watching 
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.